What's up guys, Captain Cody Davis here for yet another episode of Kite Splice Charters. And I'm gonna try and get this one done fairly quickly before this nasty thing behind us sets in on us. And what this is, is just one of our South Florida thunderstorms that we get, oh, pretty much every single day this time of year. Any of you guys that have been talking to me or corresponding with me via text, email, phone call, uh, looking to go fishing here in the summer, all of you guys probably hear that I mentioned, we're probably only going to be able to fish about four, if we're lucky, a six hour day. One, because the fishing seems to get slow around that noon o'clock time anyway, this time of year, being that the temperatures are so hot, but mostly because pretty much every day we get one of these guys or we get multiple of these that run you off the lake. And these are not your typical, normal summer time rainstorms. These are small hurricanes with crazy, crazy amounts of lightning. The wind is not blowing at all right now, but if I had to take a guess within the next 20 minutes, it's gonna be howling to 50 to 60 miles an hour. Trees will break, branches will blow everywhere. It's gonna torrentially downpour, uh, probably drop two inches of rain here on my property, and that's just an everyday thing. So gotta be very aware of these guys out here on Leo Gachobi this time of year. If any of you that are not fishing with me, that do come down here to fish this time of year, if you start seeing these dark clouds build up, get off the water. Okay, it, it, it's South Florida. This I've literally had it where it's blue sunshine skies. Catch a fish in a tournament, go back, do my culling, let the smallest fish go, check my fish out, put them in the box, stand up, and it looks like this. They happen quick, and with the low water, when you have to idle out of your fishing zone, sometimes it takes 20 minutes to 30 minutes to idle out where you can get up on plane to get out of there, and sometimes it's too late. So do not play with these. These are very, very serious and put you in a lot of trouble. As I'm saying that, I'm sitting here rambling about this video while this is encroaching on us. So I'm gonna try and get this done, but I am very excited about this video. Hopefully I can get it done here. If not, I'll pick up where I left off once this thing passes. But it's a video that I never thought I'd ever in my wildest dreams be able to make. Um, so I, I, I'm very excited, but kind of want to start this video off by sincerely saying thank you to all of you guys and gals who have subscribed to my channel. Like all the videos, comment, uh, reach out to me via text, phone call, even if you're not coming fishing with me, just saying, hey, good job. You know, I really like what you're doing. I like the content you're putting out because it means a lot. At the end of the day, I am not what I consider a YouTuber, right? I'm not trying to ruffle any feathers or start anything or, or call anyone out or anything like that, but I've said it before, you know, um, I take fishing very seriously. It is super fun to me, it's my passion, it's the only thing I really care about and I take serious in life. And um, you know, I try to show that in my videos. I'm not trying to go out and do anything clickbaity or, or, or any stupid challenges or, or just anything like that for, enter, for entertainment purposes or for people to click on. I, I want people that are just looking to go fishing in South Florida to find my videos. And you know, I, I don't wanna showcase that I'm into doing stunts or or, or stupid challenges or anything, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm going, taking you fishing, right? And uh, I take my job very seriously. I take every guide trip that I, when I pick you up at the dock, I treat it like a tournament day. And I'm going to go and do everything I can to my the best of my ability to put you on the most and biggest fish that you can possibly catch. And I want to talk about that for a second because I've been getting a lot of calls and a lot of customers on the boat that just expect because you're on Lake Okeechobee, you're going to have the best day of your life. And that is very possible okay you are on you're in the yankee stadium of bass fishing the giants live here the amounts of fish live here but at the end of the day it's just another fishery in our you know our, in our country in our nation and there are tough days just like there's tough days where you're from right um, lake chickamauga another one of the best lakes in the country uh, when i went there it was terrible right i mean we fished for me and my wife fished for i don't know how many days with just a couple couple of fish um, doesn't mean that the lake's terrible. Doesn't mean that the information I got was wrong, right? It's tough. It could be the best fishery in the world. The best fisheries in the world still have bad days. So I, and I'm very upfront with my customers and tell you that, you know, I've been having a lot of customers that just want, will seem like they just call and they just want to go out and, and catch 10 and 12 pounders. And they're very alarmed when I tell them I've never caught a 10 pounder. Uh, my PB on this lake is 938. Okay. Um, and I, I fish it almost every single day, as you guys can tell. So um, not that they don't live out here, not that you don't have a shot at a giant, not that you don't have a shot, shot at catching over a hundred fish in a day, but it's not a just every day go out there and, and throw this worm by that reed and you're gonna catch them. You gotta work for it, okay? Uh, that's just part of it. And I do that to the best of my ability to put you on the most and biggest fish I can. All right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do everything I can for you. So that's just, uh, you know, wanted to throw that out there because I've been getting a lot of that lately. But, um, 
anyway, for all of you guys that do like and subscribe to the channel, um, thank you. I'm going to continue to pump out as much content as I can. I have a big tournament next weekend. Hopefully, me and Kelly do very well in that. And I do have a video I'm holding on to where I did have a pretty cool day out there. Like I think I mentioned in my last video that I'm just waiting to post. Because I don't want to show kind of where I've been fishing, what's been going on, and things like that. Uh, so be looking forward to that video and be looking forward to however, however me and Kelly do in the Roland Martin Marine Series tournament. I will be posting it um, probably right after, even before whatever I get done editing it. So I'll be looking forward to that. So moving on to what this video is all about. Um, I really can say I really wouldn't be able to do it if it weren't for you guys that have called and booked trips with me because uh, this is my boat, right? For all of you guys, a lot of, get a lot of people ask me, why do you run a flats boat as opposed to a bass boat? One, let's face it, my wife is pretty badass. Um, not many people have wives that not only just like to go fishing, but have sponsors, fish the Toyota series for a while, fish all the local tournaments, and kind of know the lake that you make a living on better than you do, right? She has a bass boat. Um, it's actually for sale right now. If you have one information on that, I think I did a video on that as well. It's a 520L um, 2018 Ranger with a 2018 250 Pro XS on the back. So if you have questions about that, let me know. She has a bass boat. Once this is sold, she's probably going to be getting another bass boat because that's what she does. She loves saltwater fishing as well, as do I. So when I had a boat, one, I wanted a boat like this that we could do both in. We're 45 minutes from the coast, and as I mentioned, I love doing a lot of you know snook fishing, tarpon fishing, inshore fishing. So this way, when we're not bass fishing, we have something to go do that in. Also, um, this is much easier to clean, this style of boat, right? When it gets dirty, you don't have to worry about carpet going bad with all the foot traffic I have in my boat every single day. When it's dirty, I literally either bleach it or just hit it with a high-powered hose, and it's sock white clean again like you see here um and it's just it's just easier uh pretty much any guide you go with on this lake right now is running this style of boat okay and um i love it uh but as of any, any of you that have been with me in the past and fished it floats skinny but in, in this rough water that we do get on okeechobee this does tend to beat you up a little bit this is just under 20 foot um i didn't have any seats or anything in it so it wasn't the most comfortable boat to fish out of right but it got the job done it was paid for and it worked and it still does work but uh here recently i was able to upgrade and i got a new boat for all of you guys that have fished with me and said oh man i you know i had a great time but my back hurts you know this boat kind of beat you up this and that i got you covered um i'm very fortunate i, I never thought i would own a boat like this and it's actually my dream boat and I was able to actually get it. So I guess I'm gonna walk you guys over here and show you what it is and tell you about it. All right, so before I get to showing you guys the boat, I feel like I have to thank everybody who was directly involved with this purchase. So first and foremost, I could not have done this uh, without my beautiful, awesome wife. So babe, if you're watching this, which I'm sure you are, cause I'm gonna make you watch it to prove to you that I said this. Um, thank you. You know, I mean, you're obviously the best thing that's ever happened to me. And um, I'm so glad that you and I are super happy with this purchase. It's kind of our dream boat to have. And uh, look forward to making a lot of memories with you in this thing. And the other reason I couldn't have got it without you is because of the phone call she made. Um, again, my wife is pretty damn cool, right? I mean, she's in the fishing industry. She's tournament fishing. She knows a lot of people. I got quoted on this boat by two companies here in South Florida. Um, Price was pretty high, which I expected with everything going on. Everything's expensive right now. But on top of that, it was going to be about a three to four month wait to get this boat. And that is no, at no fault to the dealerships, right? Nothing is easy to come across right now, whether it's rods, reels, lures, motors, boats, trolling motors. Everything's a pain to get. Um, long story short, not going to really get into it, but had some troubles with my old boat and I needed a new boat kind of quick. So that was not an option. Um, the boat, I, I knew the boat I wanted and my wife just so happened to know somebody in that was a dealer for them um, in a different state. So she called Chris from Blazer Boats. Chris, if you are watching this, um, thank you. I mean, that's all I, I, I want to tell you a bunch of other things, but really at the end of the day, just thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for uh, making this happen. Uh, my wife explained to him the situation. Uh, we're looking for a boat and it was kind of a let me give you a call back kind of thing. We went about our day thinking he'd call us in a day or two trying to find us a boat. He literally called us back in three minutes. I wasn't even done eating my Chewy bar and the phone rings and says, if you gonna, if you guys want to drive to North Carolina, I got you a boat. 
not only was it the boat, it was the exact boat I wanted. Colors, everything. Um, and I live in South Florida, driving to North Carolina. Um, I don't remember the town it was in, but we went to Twin Lakes Marine in North Carolina. They're a Blazer dealership up there. They also sell Phoenix boats, the, the most badass pontoon boats I've ever seen in my life. Um, and the price that they, you know, were able to price this thing at blew away the competition down here. I mean, it was we were in the car when a few hours driving to North Carolina. It was a no-brainer. So. Thank you, Chris, and thank you, Twin Lakes Marine, all of you guys there. Hopefully, you guys are watching this. I told you when you come down, we're already going to take you fishing on the rig. Guys, buying a boat can be stressful. Buying anything nowadays can be stressful. The people at Twin Lakes Marine, super informative, shot you straight, no hidden, no nothing. What they told you was going to be, it was. They had the boat ready, went over the boat with me. The, the most polite and down home people I've ever met in my life. Um, I, I, I just couldn't, cannot say enough good things about them. Funny enough, they knew a lot of people that I fish against down here in Okeechobee that also make the drive up there to purchase boats from them. So that tells you something. Um, so thank you, Twin Lakes Marine. Definitely look them up if you guys are in the process or in the market for a new boat. Give them a call and you're probably gonna wanna get a new boat when you see this thing. This thing is bad to the bone. Um, my parents, my in-laws, my family, and most of all, my customers. I, I I wouldn't be able to afford a boat. I never thought in my wildest dreams I'd be able to afford a boat like this. I still can't. Um, it's been such a crazy week and a half. That's about as long as I've had we've had the boat um, that I haven't even had a chance to take it in <clears throat> and enjoy it. Um, so thank you, because without you guys booking me and keeping me in business, I wouldn't be able and couldn't justify purchasing a boat like this. So uh, thank you, and I got one other thank you I'll get to here in just a minute. But uh, let's see this boat. So I was gonna log you off, but I'm not. What I went with, try to get it in full frame here, is a 2021 Blazer 675 Ultimate Bay. Now, this is not a sales pitch or anything like that. This is the boat I have been dreaming about for literally probably three years now since they came out. I am not sponsored by Blazer nor am I ever going to be, I'm sure. Um, they're not paying me, nothing like that. This is the best South Florida fishing boat on the market in the world. Hands down, bar none, nothing close. When I saw this boat, the first few times I've seen them, whether it was at boat shows or anything, the fact that there are not hundreds of these running around down here in South Florida blows my mind. And I don't know if it's that people don't know about them yet, this is the boat, okay? We live in a state where you can literally, and I've done this many a times, be fishing out in the boonies in central Florida, flipping mats or throwing frogs for eight and nine pound bass, put the boat on the trailer, and within an hour and a half, be catching snook, tarpon, jack, snapper, sailfish, whatever you want, literally right there or that way. You could fish for anything, and we, we this is what makes South Florida what it is. I mean, we could fish for anything you want whenever you want within a two-hour drive. You could do it all in a boat like this, which is another reason why I had the flats boat style boat, because I like to do everything. I'm born and raised down here. I, I take part in every type of fishery available in the area. This thing is bad to the bone and far exceeded my expectations on everything I thought it would do. So, look at that thing. It looks like the damn Batmobile, right? The thing is sick my favorite color is black just so happened the boat chris found me had black rims i never even thought i'd have this was the funny part driving home with this thing everyone you know my wife she's breezy she's looking at all the the, the the bells and whistles this thing has i was like babe i've got rims on a trailer hell my trailer lights are working i never even thought i'd have something that had trailer lights working right stupid as that sounds um this thing's just it's awesome. So I'll kind of just give you guys a little bit of a walkthrough. We'll kind of start on the front um, and kind of show you guys how I have this thing rigged. Big flat front deck, right? I, only, I not only guide, I'm a tournament fisherman. I don't want two boats. I want one boat that I can do everything in. I need the big, or me and my partner, whoever I'm fishing with, need the big front deck to be able to cast, flip, do our tournament fishing stuff up here. All right, so that was a big thing. A lot of the bay boats nowadays, you know, they have a small front deck, maybe about yay big cut off here. And that's not big enough to do what we do down here 
uh, whether it's snook fishing or tournament bass fishing. So I needed the big front deck. Um, I didn't want a deep gunnel on the front deck. I wanted it flat. It just makes it easier when you're flipping reeds and, and things like that. This had the exact layout I want. Um, you got a uh, anchor locker here, which I will never ever use because I just don't like the thought of an anchor banging around in this locker. Then you've got two storage compartments, which are big. That is the only thing I can possibly say bad about this boat is it doesn't have an extraordinary amount of storage. But as I told you guys a million times, I'm the most simplistic fisherman you'll ever see. I don't need much storage. So what I have in here, all my life jackets, my Coast Guard, nonsense, throw cushions, all, all that stuff is locked in here. And this is my tackle storage, which I would open up for you, but it's just a storage compartment with all my, my tackle, you know, soft plastic, hard baits, everything fits in here. Trolling motors, like I mentioned, they are a pain to get. I did not go with the old tricks with the hand, with the remote and all that, because one, it's great if I'm guiding, sitting back there in the seat, but when I go fishing myself, I don't want to be flipping reeds and having to reach down and, and grab a, a hand control to, to do that remote. That's too complicated for me. So I went with the hand control. That's fine. Um, the foot pedal would have been nice, but then you have a giant foot pedal up here. There's nowhere to really in, um, recess it. And then if I'm throwing a cast net on the coast, I don't want that in the way. So hand control with the little big foot button. All I need was unable to get. It's like a four month wait for one of these babies right now. The, the hand control. So. Bobby, if you're watching this, thank you, buddy. Bought this off my buddy, who uh, this thing's only like a year old. Pulls this thing around great. It's a 112 hand control Riptide. This is a 22 foot boat. On 100, this thing basically gets me up on plane. So pretty cool and uh, really simple. I'm simple. Move back here. Um, it's got storage down here as well, which I believe is a cooler, but I just put the old Yeti right in there. Works great. It's got rod locker, or it's the other thing, it does not have rod lockers, um, but these little rod holders down here underneath the gunnel, as you can see there, probably upside down, those work great. The rods don't rattle or rock around at all. And then I've got eight rod holders here, um, you know, to hold my rods vertical. So they have, and I've had them sticking up while I'm guiding and I honestly haven't gotten in the way because the front deck is so large, you're, you're far enough away from me, you don't hit them while you're casting, which is awesome. Um, console, right? Look at that. That is, it's badass. The whole boat's badass. Got the two bucket seats in there. So for all of you that had, used to have to lean back while you're running and stretch your back out from my, from my little bench cushion there with no backrest, don't have to do that anymore. Got a, you know, a captain seat and a passenger seat there. Um, you can kind of stick you guys out here on my boom. You can see what the whole console looks like. I don't have a unit mounted in there yet because I'm not sure what kind of unit I want to go with. I am a hummingbird guy because I'm very simple again, but um, I'm not sure what I want to go with there yet. So any of you guys who have more experience than me with electronics, let me know what you think I should go with. On Lego Gachobi, I never use the depth find. I don't, I don't use it, right? We're fishing in less than three feet of water, 365 here. So um, it's mainly just a GPS thing for waypoints. But when I'm on the coast trying to mark snook, trying to mark bottom, do things like that, I, it does come in handy. So not sure. Drop a comment. Let me know what you guys think I should get. Got my three trolling motor batteries under here. Plenty of room. That's another thing with flats and bay boats. Underneath the console is the best place for your batteries, no doubt but they always, they always just barely fit. This console is huge. Does a great job of breaking the wind, breaking the rain, um, and it's got plenty of room under there for your batteries. So um, that's great there. And then I've got a live well here. I've got a live well here um, underneath this bench. And these are two rod holders, which are great if I wanna troll plugs for snook or anything. Um, but what also goes in there is a backrest, which I just don't have in there um, right now. I took it out, but a backrest. So you got, I could see, one person here and I can fit up to three people on this bench with backrest so you have a comfy ride if it's even if it's you know, we run into some rough water got a storage compartment on that side and then um, this comes off completely you open up well here I can let's just show you in this thing let's see if you can see well either way you pop this up Jack all the way down so that but, but you can go right in your bilge 
all of your pumps, everything are just super easy to get to, um, which I like, right? Anyone who's ever rigged a flats or a bay boat, getting to your pumps, getting to anything like that is most of the time a total, total pain. They make it super easy um, and they really thought this boat out. That's about it. Um, you know, the, the console's awesome. It's got a cup holder, it's got everything you need, got all the switches, got this little cool compartment here to put your wallet keys in. Then float skinny, right? I don't, I was fishing yesterday where bass boats could not get to. That is no lie. Gets up skinny and it's fast. Um, guiding, and I, I'm not a speed demon, but um, I've got this 250 show on here, which I'm a Mercury guy, I'll be honest with you. But, um, this had the show on there. I've heard nothing but good things about this Yamaha outboard. And uh, I've been running it for about a week and a half now and have zero complaints about it whatsoever. I'm giving it a shot. Um, so far, I love it. This boat loaded down. I had two customers and me in it, full tank of gas, running 66 yesterday, which is as fast as I need to go. And with this motor, I'm running 66, getting three miles to the gallon, which is pretty damn good. Just got back, literally just got out of the truck when I started making this video from uh, Mike's over at headquarters and uh he went ahead and put my power poles on and hooked up my trolling motor and did all that so mike i know i tell you all the time thank you thank you so much mike over there is a one-stop shop all right i mean he he's ringing up spro popping frogs and big easies at one second and the next second he's out there putting on power poles and hooking all this up rigging everything did a super clean job he's the man that's why i tell all of you guys just to go see mike couldn't be nicer couldn't be more helpful and he's gonna shoot you straight but um, that's about it, guys. Like I said, I mean, the two live wells, let me put this on, I'll show you. Um, you know, the live wells are plenty big. So I can sell tournament fish out of this, as you can see. Um, you know, live, both live wells are pretty much the exact same size. The best thing about this boat is it floats shallow, it's fast, and it runs rough water like a dream. Um, I can't wait for the next tournament I fish out of it when it is rough, because uh, I'll be passing a lot of bass boats on the main lake. That was my biggest reason about getting a new boat, was keeping my customers comfortable, right? That flats boat was great on calm days, but when this lake kicks up and you can't run rough water, it's very uncomfortable. It's almost nerve wracking. You're hitting waves, beating the hell out of people. And that's, that's, that was kind of the turning point. I needed something comfortable for my customers. You got these seats, you got this backrest. You don't feel anything in this boat. I ran it two days ago out in about a two and a half foot chop coming across the tip of Kramer Island down south. And uh, it just eats it up. Uh, you can go pretty quick. You don't feel it. It doesn't bang you up. It's awesome. Um, it, like I said, this boat has far exceeded my expectations. <clears throat> I'm still getting used to it, still playing with it, but uh, have nothing but good things to say about this Blazer Ultimate Bay. If you guys want the perfect, perfect South Florida boat to do a little bit of everything in it, <clears throat> I couldn't, uh, I couldn't really recommend anything else. It's everything I thought it would be. So, thank you everybody again who uh, has supported me, supported my business, booked me. If you guys want to come fishing in this thing, the times now the fight is very good. It's tough. But it's good. If you go out there and put your work in, you will get bit and you have a chance to catch some big ones. Literally, as I'm doing this video, my partner Kelly has just sent me pictures of two fish over eight pounds while I'm sitting here. So I guess I should be on the lake, but not here talking to you guys. Got a trip tomorrow. Going to put the camera away, rig up to take out some uh, very lucky people. And uh, that's about it. Thank you, Twin Lakes Marine. Thank you, Chris at Blazer. Thank you, Mike Krause at Okeechobee Fishing Headquarters. And uh, thank you to my beautiful wife. So... You guys are going to start seeing a lot more videos come out of this thing. Um, I'll be continuing to go over, you know, new things with the boat when I put units in it and just showcase the boat some more. So uh, if you guys want to come fishing, give me a call. Got my information. And uh, thank you guys so much again. See you guys on the next one.